Welcome to this video from the P-Way engineer, looking at the effects of winter weather on the railway infrastructure. The large number of parts and components that make up the railway are subjected to the range of weathers seen throughout the different seasons of the year. It would be accurate to say that the infrastructure is most affected by the weather at the extreme ends of the spectrum when it is hottest or coldest. In this video, we will be looking at the effect the winter weather has on the railway. We will cover the effect of low temperatures on the rails as well as the effects of ice and snow on the track and other parts of the infrastructure. Be sure to keep watching right to the end to catch a bonus section. So, let's start with our first section and look at what the low temperatures do to the rails. Every year, at the first onset of cold weather, when the temperature first drops, there is a marked increase in the number of broken rails. Why is this? It is normally a combination of factors, but the key things we will look at are Rail under tension when stressed as part of CWR track Rail defects The condition of the surrounding track and other complementary such as clips Rails under tension Rails are stressed or put under tension by artificially lengthening them during installation to help mitigate the risks of thermal expansion and contraction. This is what stops them buckling in the warm summer temperatures. Check out the videos from the channel for more on this subject. However, when the temperature drops and the metal contracts, the tension in the rail increases. When the tension increases, this in turn increases the likelihood of the metal breaking. The more tension that is in the rail, the less force is required to break it. Combine this with another factor, such as an internal defect that has already weakened the structure of the metal, and this combination leads to a break. Rail defects Rail defects occur in a number of ways. Commonly they are either internal defects formed in the manufacturing process or external defects from damage to the rail. Defects tend to grow in size with time, slowly weakening the rail. Under normal conditions it could take years for them to get to the point where the rail properties would become compromised enough for it to break. However, when you suddenly increase the tension within the rail, as occurs when the temperature drops, this can be enough to cause the rail to fail. This is why snap frosts are normally followed by a spike in the number of rail breaks. The conditions of the track system and its components in a certain area can really impact the other components' performance. For example, poor drainage can also cause standing water on track. The water can cause corrosion in the foot of the rail, a type of defect. Another example is if the ballast is in poor condition and is voiding, this causes the rail to flex more than normal as trains pass over, increasing the forces the rail is subjected to. If the rail that is being put under more stress due to poor support from the ballast has a defect in it, this additional force becomes a lot more of an issue. I hope you are enjoying this video. As well as the YouTube channel, remember to check out our website for more railway engineering content. Google the P-Way Engineer. While you are there, don't forget to subscribe to our email list to get a discount on all our merch. Thank you. So, now we know what the cold weather does to the rails, let's have a look at how it affects some of the other parts of the railway. When the temperature drops, other winter weather follows. One form of this is ice. As well as making platforms and other walking routes slippery underfoot, ice buildup can cause a number of different issues. DC conductor rails and overhead lines can both get iced up, stopping the trains being able to draw power. If this is in isolated areas, shoe gear or pantographs can be damaged as they strike the iced patches. Tunnels and underbridges are also susceptible to icicles building up inside them if water is seeping through brickwork. These can fall onto or be struck by trains. Points can also become iced up, stopping them moving. 
This is solved by the installation of points heating equipment. Normally in the form of electric heating elements clipped to the rails, they warm the rails to stop ice forming. Finally, there is the ultimate winter weather, snow. A light dusting is okay, but in heavy snowfall, points can become blocked up, even with points heating equipment fitted. There also comes a point where the amount on snow on the track stops trains being able to run as the tracks cannot be safely seen by the driver. Managing the railway for the weather is difficult given the unpredictability. In the UK it is a particular challenge due to the range of weather conditions experienced. Will there become a time where seasonal preparation means restressing rails to different temperatures for the winter, as well as retensioning the overhead line? As the climate changes and weather patterns with it, it is a very real possibility. Thank you for watching this far. In this video, we have covered the impact winter weather has on the railway, but perhaps the most infamous railway issue occurs in the autumn. The phrase that draws groans and frustration from railway passengers. Leaves on the line. As a bonus for sticking with the video, let's have a look at leaves on the line. So, why do leaves on the line cause such an issue? Leaves become an issue if they fall in a large enough number, such as autumn time, that they sit on the rail. The passage of trains then mashes them into a paste-like consistency that sits on the rail head. This poses two issues. The first issue is with track circuit-based signaling systems. This type of signaling system relies on current from one rail being passed through the train axle to the other rail to show when a train is in that section of track. The leaf paste, sitting on top of the rail can form an insulating layer between the rail and the wheel. This stops the current passing across and completing the electric circuit. This then shows the track section as unoccupied when in fact there is a train there. From this, a second train could be routed into that section of track, unaware of the presence of the first train. This could lead to a train-on-train -train collision. The other main issue caused by the leaf paste is grip, or adhesion, between the wheel and the rail. The paste prevents the train wheel getting as much grip as normal on the rail. Similar to water on the roads, this affects trains braking, but also when they are trying to pull away or speed up. This can lead to trains sliding past signals or the correct stopping places at platforms. The slipping of wheels can also lead to defects being created on the head of the rail, or heavier freight trains being unable to get up inclined sections of track. So how do does the railway combat these issues? The first way is through the management of lineside vegetation. By keeping the number of trees that overhang the railway under control, the amount of leaf fall that ends up on the track is minimized. Secondly, in areas that have frequent issues, Drivers can be briefed to slow down early on approach to stations or signals to avoid overshooting stopping points. The timetable can be altered to allow them more time to travel slightly slower. Lastly, but by no means least, is the use of the railhead treatment train. This train runs along key routes or those with a history of leaf fall related issues to remove the leaf matter before it becomes a problem. To achieve this they have to run regularly throughout the autumn period. The IHDT uses high-pressure water jets to remove the leaf matter from the rail head. The train has a number of wagons fitted with water tanks to supply these jets. Some of the trains also then drop a mix of sand, antifreeze, and steel shot onto the rail to improve grip. This mix is called sandite. So, there you have a summary of the issues the railway faces, from both an operations and engineering point of view, through the autumn and winter months. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a like and also hit subscribe. Thank you.